Hey everyone, welcome to Ingwiz. This is your teacher Rahul and Abizara. Today we're going to talk about the fourth lesson of clear English pronunciation. And in this lesson we're going to focus on these terminology. Intonation, types of intonation, rules of intonation, homonyms, homophones, and homographs. Now let's get started. Intonation is a very important topic in English phonology. It is the entire variation of pitch while speaking. In other words, we can say intonation is the rise and fall of voice while speaking in order to convey an accurate meaning. A very obvious difference in intonation can be observed when looking at statements and questions. When it comes to questions, we use rising intonation. For example, yes-no questions. And when it comes to statements, we use falling intonation. For example, I'm James. I'm James. As you can see, my voice goes down. I'm James. So it means I use falling intonation. Are you James? Are you James? As you can see, my voice goes up while articulating this sentence. Basically, we have two kinds of or two types of intonation. We have rising intonation, which your voice goes up, and falling intonation, your voice goes down. Rising intonation uses a higher pitch, meaning your voice goes up, while falling intonation uses a lower pitch, meaning your voice goes down. We have certain rules for intonation. For example, we use falling intonation for WH questions, meaning our voice goes down. How are you? What's the matter? How are you? What's the matter? Some other examples are, what's your name? How are you today? Rule number two is for yes-no questions. We use rising intonation. Meaning, our voice goes up. For example, Are you okay? Are you okay? Do you like it? Do you like it? As you can feel and hear, my voice goes up when articulating such sentence. Rule number three is for statements. For statements which they end with a period, not a question mark, we use falling intonation. For example, we are friends. We are friends. I would call him. I would call him. So we use falling intonation for statements. We use rising intonation for exclamatory sentences. Sentences which show emotions and sudden feelings. For example, that's stupid. Oh my God. We use rising intonation for exclamatory sentences. Rule number five. We use rising intonation for tag questions for checking. For checking the information, if it's true or not. He's busy, isn't he? He's busy, isn't he? They're working, aren't they? They're working, aren't they? But if we are chatting with someone using tag questions, we can use falling intonation. For example, he's busy, isn't he? He's busy, isn't he? They're working, aren't they? They're working, aren't they? So we use rising intonation for tag questions for checking the information and we use falling intonation for tag questions for chatting. Keep in mind that intonation also deals with the stress of words. Words are stressed to make a certain emphasis. A sentence can be spoken differently depending on the speaker's intention. Which means, if you stress each word in a sentence, it can convey a different meaning. Look at the following sentences. Speak them out loud and especially stress the word that is in bold writing. Then think about how the meaning of utterance changes. So the sentence is, I did not read anything about the disaster. 
we don't have any stress here right now. But if I stress the first word, which is the subject, I'm focusing and emphasizing on the doer of the action. I did not read anything about the disaster. Not you, not Ellie. I did not read anything about the disaster. But if I stress the word not, I'm emphasizing on non-occurrence of the action. I did not read anything about the disaster. I did not read anything about the disaster. If I stress the verb, I'm focusing on the action. I did not read anything about the disaster. I did not read anything about the disaster. Here, I'm focusing on the indefinite pronoun anything. I did not read anything about the disaster. In this sentence, I'm focusing on the object. Disaster. I did not read anything about the disaster. So, stress changes the meaning of a sentence, depending on which word you stress. Now, let's talk about homonyms. Homonyms are words having same sounds but different spelling, also called homophone. Plus, words having the same spelling but different sounds, which is also called homograph. And finally, words having the same sounds and same spelling but different meaning and grammar class. This means that homonyms are divided into two categories, homographs and homophones. Let's talk about homographs. Homographs are words with same spelling, which means that we write them with the same alphabet, but different grammar, pronunciation, or meaning. It's important to know that if one of these is different, we can call it homograph, except for the spelling. Same spelling, but different grammar, maybe different pronunciation, or maybe different meaning. For example, wind. If I pronounce this word wind, it becomes a noun, and it means breeze. Wind, a breeze. But if I pronounce this word like wind, wind, it becomes a verb, and it means to twist or turn something. Wind is noun, wind is verb. The next word is bank, bank. As a noun, a bank is a financial institution, a place where you save your money. But as a verb, bank, it means to pile up. The pronunciation is the same, bank, but the meaning and grammar is different. The grammar, one is noun, the other is verb. The meaning is also different. Let's look at a list of homographs, words with same spelling but different grammar, meaning, or pronunciation. The first column is the noun column. The second one is the verb column. Park. As a noun, it's a public garden. As a verb, park means to stop or leave. So the grammar is different, the meaning is different, but their pronunciation is the same. Park. Object. Object is noun. It means a thing or an article. Object. Object. It's verb. It means to protest against or oppose. As you can see, the pronunciation is different. Object, object. The grammar class is different and the meaning is different. Produce. As a noun, it's pronounced like produce, which means food or crops. In British English, it's pronounced like produce. But when it comes to its verb form, we pronounce it like produce. Produce. We stress the second syllable. Produce. Produce means to make or manufacture. Second. Second. As a noun, second means a moment or bit. As an adjective, it means not first. Second. As a verb, second means to formally support something. I second your idea. So, as you can see, the grammar is different and their meanings are also different. Close. As an adjective, 
close. The pronunciation is close, which means near. As a verb, it is pronounced like close, with z sound. Close. It means to shut, lock, or wrap up. The next word is bear. As a noun, it's a large, heavy animal with thick fur. But as a verb, bear means to tolerate, to sustain. The next word is left. As an adjective or as an adverb, it means left hand or at nine o'clock, not the right hand. Left as a verb is the past and past participle of leave. He left the class early. Turn left. The pronunciation is the same, but their meaning and grammar is different. Bar. Bar. Bat. Bat. A cricket bat. A felling nocturnal mammal. Bow. As a noun, bow. As a verb, bow. Bow. Can. Can. It can be verb. It means to be able to. It can be a noun, meaning a container. Fall. As a noun, it means autumn. As a verb, it means to drop down or collapse. The second term is homophone. It's taken from two words. Homo means same. Phone means sound. Homophones are words with same pronunciation, but different spelling, grammar, or meaning. So we have the same phonetic transcript, but different alphabet letters. Their spelling is different. Their sounds are are same. For example, new, new. I knew your car is new. Eight. Eight. Last night I ate eight apples. Woo. There, there. Their car is over there. Sell, sell. Two, two. See, see. Allowed, allowed. You're not allowed to speak aloud in the class. Assent. Ascent. Meet. Meet. Four. Four. If we stress this preposition, it's pronounced like four. Unstressed format is fur. Fur. Sight. Sight. No. No. Very. Very. I. I. Right. Right. I write with my right hand. Choirs. Choirs. Birth. Birth. Cashed. Cashed. Sensor. Sensor. Draft. Draft. Use. Use. Hem. Hem. Vein. Vein. Flower, flower, shoot, shoot, kernel, kernel, core, core, net, net, need, need, wrapped, wrapped, rest, rest, ring, ring. The last term for today is homonym. Homonyms are words with same spelling and pronunciation. Once again, their spelling is the same, their pronunciation is the same, but different grammar and meaning. For example, bear, bear. Their spelling, their sounds are the same. Their meanings are different. Bear is an animal. Bear as a verb it means to tolerate. Capital. Capital. Desert. Desert. Lie. Lie. Sink. Sink. May. May. May is one of the months of the year. We capitalize the first letter, and May is also a verb, a modal auxiliary verb, which shows possibility. Bank. 
Bank can be a noun, a financial institution, and it can also mean coast, beside a river. Fall, fall. Okay, guys, this was our lesson for today. I hope you enjoyed and understood the difference between homophone, homograph, and homonym, and also the rules for intonation. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to be notified every time I upload brand new videos. See you around, guys.